Okay, today I want to show you how to set up a Kubernetes home lab. And we're going to do this with bare metal on, on an actual machine, a hardware piece of hardware that we have that we can install an operating system on and get Kubernetes up and running. And of course, we're going to do this with Talos because it's the easiest way to get started with Kubernetes on bare metal. And so behind me on my bench here is an old Dell desktop and you can get old desktops for pretty cheap these days. I mean, under a hundred dollars, um, depending on where you live and depending on what the specs are. This machine is like an Optiplex 990, which came out in 2011. It'll run Kubernetes great, uh, no problem. So let's go ahead and show you how to get that up and running. So we're gonna start by heading over to talos.dev to download the ISO we need. And this ISO is gonna be a part of the documentation. It's actually in GitHub, but I'm just gonna show you where to find it in the docs. Go to the documentation and then the Talos Linux guides. And this is gonna give us an installation dropdown. And this is a bare metal platform. This is no virtualization. We just wanna install the thing. And we have a couple different ways to install it. And usually these are like pixie booting environments or something you have established. We're just gonna go with the ISO. This is just download an ISO, put it on a, on a USB drive and then boot it. And we're gonna have two flavors here. Uh, one is secure boot. If you're going through the image factory, which will download and, and create the images for you with different layers, all this sorts of stuff. We're just gonna get the standard old school BIOS metal ISO because like I said, this desktop is 13 years old. It doesn't even have UEFI on it. It is an old BIOS machine. There is no, I think there might be some TPM but no secure boot. So I just need the old ISO. And to get that, we're gonna jump over to the Talos releases page and this is just a GitHub release. And in this case, we're gonna have a bunch of different artifacts that we don't need because again, we're gonna do this on metal. So we're gonna search for metal AMD 64. And there's our ISO, let's go ahead and download that. Now that that's downloaded, we need to put it on a USB drive. And there's a bunch of different flashers you can use to flash an ISO to a USB drive, depending on your operating system. I like to use Ventoy. If you go over to ventoy.net, you can download this thing that will basically be like a manager for ISOs on your flash drive. So you don't need to extract it and keep rewriting the flash drive every time. I have a 64 gig USB drive here. And as you can see, I just have a bunch of ISOs on the system. I don't extract them. I don't rewrite them to the system or anything. I just download the ISO and throw it in here. And so we have our Talos 167 Metal AMD ISO. We just copied it in. That's all we had to do. And now we can boot the system from this USB drive. All right, so I have a tiny pilot here that I can connect to the console and you can see watch it boot. And this is gonna load up and automatically boot for my USB drive. If you need to change your settings, you might need to fiddle with the USB uh, boot options. You can see here, I have an F12 to change my boot options or at least set a temporary, I wanna boot from the USB drive. That completely depends on your hardware. You'll have to figure that side of it out. For me, I already set my USB to be the first boot device because I often are am booting different things on this machine. So once the machine boots from USB, if you have Ventoy, you'll be greeted with this uh, lovely menu, which has all of the ISOs on your disk. And in this case, again, I'm using this Talos 167, 167 metal image that we just downloaded. We can boot that and boot it in normal mode. And if all goes well, the system will start to boot up. You'll see Linux load. It's gonna to go to a grub screen real quick and then give you the initial, hey, we're actually booting the system. And again, I'm using this over a tiny pilot, but you can just plug in a monitor and watch it do its thing. All right, when things finally boot up, you'll get to this screen. And this is the Talos dashboard. This is your local console, which we have another video of. You can see a quick tour of it. But the things we really wanna know about in here is one that we're in this stage maintenance mode uh, up in this top right corner. Ah, oh, go. Cool. let me see if I can uh, make this full screen for you. There you go, that might be a little bit better with the resolution. I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. But we'll see uh, stages in maintenance mode and we actually wanna see our IP address which is over right across from that. And I get IP uh, 192.168.6.47. So I'm gonna need that IP address to be able to connect to this and configure it because Talos is all API driven. There's no shell, there's no SSH, there's no users. Let's generate a config file and get it going. I'm gonna jump back over to the docs in the getting started guide, which is gonna show us all the steps we need to do to turn this into a Kubernetes cluster and actually install it. Uh, things like downloading Talos control, um, we can get that as we need it. And basically we need network access. 
And so with that, we're going to copy this command, Talos control gen config, our cluster name and the cluster endpoint, which is we only have one machine, so we have one IP address. Here's my example command that I'm gonna run, Talos control gen config. I'm gonna call this cluster Deluster because it's on a Dell. Uh, and then we're gonna have our endpoint, which is the IP address of the node back there. And that includes HTTPS because this is secure with TLS certificates, as well as the default Kubernetes port 6443. This generated our certificates, which is our kind of root of trust and some tokens, as well as a control plane, worker and Talos config. And the Talos config is for our Talos control command to be able to talk to the node. And then the control plane and worker are for the actual Kubernetes cluster. So we have that default config, but we also need a little bit of information about the box. And with that, we're gonna get the disk information because we need to know where to install Talos. So we'll run Talos control again and run the disk subcommand. Disks. And we're gonna use insecure. And insecure is just telling the API like we're not sending you a certificate to authenticate. And in maintenance mode is the only time Talos is available to make these kind of queries. So before the machine's set up, before it's been secured and installed and locked down, we can query some information from the machine with an insecure flag. And this gets a little garbled with a small screen here, uh, but you can see here that I have a couple different uh, disks. This is the dev, uh, like slash dev path and a model. And that's usually enough for me to know what I'm looking at here. And so in this case, I see a dev on NVMe N1 and a dev of SDA. And the question is, where do I want to do this install? And in this case, I can see that the model of the SDA is a data traveler. And I know that's the name of my USB drive. So I don't actually want to use that for an installation. I'm gonna to wanna to use this other one, which has a model number that I don't recognize, uh, but is definitely an NVMe drive that's internal to the system. So we're gonna use this NVMe 0N1. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna modify our control plane to specify that's where we want Talos to do the install. So I just opened up Vim and searched for dev slash and I found the SDA is the typical first installation. And again, I don't want that because that would try to overwrite my USB drive. So NVMe 0N1 and that's the disk we actually want to use. Now that we modified the default templates, we can apply it to the machine. And we're just gonna send this information to the machine endpoint API and say, hey, I want you to do this install. Here's your configuration. And we use the apply config command. Again, the same nodes is that IP address. We're still in maintenance mode. So this is an insecure uh, command that we're sending. And then uh, the file that we're actually gonna apply. So if I apply this, and I'm gonna quickly switch over to my dashboard here and you're gonna see it's already gonna to start to do stuff. Uh, here, we're gonna get this stage is now installing up here in the top left, as well as the cluster name is already Deluster. And the, the reboot happened really quickly because it just did the install. It went through and installed everything it needed to and it's gonna reboot and reapply those settings. So the machine just rebooted and now it's gonna go through and do the whole installation phase. Uh, we get a new stage here of booting because we just did the install and we get this middle section here of what version of Kubernetes we're going to use as well as things like the kubelet, the API server controller manager. All that is going to be available to me, but we need to do one more step to kind of get the, the cluster started. And the thing we need to do to get the Kubernetes cluster started is we need to create a database, an etcd database. So here's my bootstrap command is, we're just gonna do Talos control bootstrap. Again, the same node. I only have one node in the cluster, so it's also the same endpoint. And then I'm going to specify my Talos config, which again is the local file that it generated for me that gives me the certificate authentication. So I'm not doing insecure anymore because Talos has already done an install and now it's waiting for authenticated requests. It's not going to accept any more of that insecure business. So we're gonna run that bootstrap command and quickly switch over to our console here because again, a lot of this goes pretty quick. Okay, right when I applied that config, I hit an error. And this is something that you should absolutely know about whenever you're trying to do this. Uh, you'll see here that I got an un RPC available, unavailable error trying to hit that IP address, my 192.168.6.47. And that's a little strange because I just had the machine up and running. 
If I switch back to my console, you'll see here that my IP address changed up here in the top right corner. It's now 6.55. So if you're doing this in a home lab cluster, definitely make sure you set a reserved IP address or a DHCP reservation on your network for whatever MAC address you're trying to get to because these IP addresses can change even while I'm recording this video. <laughs> so it's something to make sure you do. All right, so this is a good lesson to learn. As I was setting this up, my IP address changed and I have two ways I could fix that. One, I could go through and set a reservation for the original IP address that I had and say, hey, I always wanna get this same IP address. I already have certificates made. I already have configuration made. That'd be fine. The second thing I could do is I could set a new IP reservation of something that I actually want, maybe not in the DHCP range, and I can reinstall Talos. And I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall Talos. And to do that, we're gonna go through Ventoy again, boot off the disk in normal mode. And when it gets to this grub config here, I'm gonna reset the Talos installation. And that's the bottom option here. And it's just gonna wipe the drive for me. It's gonna wipe the disk, reboot again, and I'm gonna go through that same setup. So when you're setting this up, Make sure you have an IP address set that's not going to change because that needs to be uh, consistent in your certificates. Okay, after a real quick detour there of setting up a static IP address, we are back in a booting state. Uh, so we have the stage of booting and we haven't run the bootstrap command yet. We have a stable IP address and, and we're installed. So that's back where we are. And we did apply the control, the control plane config here. The bootstrap command is an authenticated API call with the certificates, the client side certificates that we generated from that first step of gen config. So now we're going to apply that bootstrap. We can see in the log that the started a task for etcd for container etcd. So we're gonna get an etcd cluster up and running now. We have a stage of running over here on the left that went from booting, booting to running and we have a ready state of false. So not everything is ready yet. And we are going to just sit back and wait because we can see through the uh, logs here, this rendered new static pod API server. Let's actually show you a cleaner way to get to this as well. You can do Talos control dashboard with all the same config, our endpoint, our node, all that's the same. And this gives us that UI and it's probably a lot easier to see that uh, here in this stream than what we had before. And, and now this is starting up. You can zoom out just a little bit there. Um, Kubelet's healthy, but things are still gonna be running. Another way to get that information directly to my terminal without looking at the local console if it's plugged into something is Talos control logs. And we're gonna add a follow flag. And again, our endpoint and node is that same node. Our Talos config is the one that we just generated. And we're gonna look at the etcd service. It's gonna stream the etcd logs directly back to us. And so we can see what's going on with etcd. While the cluster is booting, one other thing we can also run is something like the services subcommand. And if you send it with no flags, it's just gonna give you all of the services in the cluster. And so now we can see, again, the node they're on, our API of Talos itself, container D, the CRI, dashboard, and then here we have all the actual Kubernetes, uh, a couple of Kubernetes things, kubelets and etcd. And it looks like all these health checks are successful. So let's look up the dashboard one more time and zoom out just a little bit there and we can see that the kubelet, the API server, controller manager, and scheduler all are healthy and now we're in a ready state. So the Kubernetes cluster is ready to go. Let's go ahead and get a kubeconfig. We're gonna use the kubeconfig subcommand and the path where we want the kubeconfig to be written out. Let's export the kubeconfig so we can call the Kubernetes API. Okay, get node. And there we go. We have one of our nodes in this cluster. It's a control plane and we have our version. The last thing I wanna to do to this is actually allow me to run workloads on this because by default, I can't run workloads on a control plane node. It's a very good idea to keep those things separated, but with one machine, I want to be able to run workloads on it. So let's go ahead and modify our node config to untaint the node. So in this case, I'm gonna head back to the docs and if you search for how to enable workers on your control plane node, uh, you can see we need to update our control plane config. So we have this allow scheduling control planes true. So let's look at our control plane, allow scheduling, oops, schedule on control plane true. And in this case, it's the very end of the file. I'm gonna uncomment it. So just like we had it before, apply config, nodes, same IP address, Talos config, and that control plane YAML, which is what we just modified. 
I forgot to add my endpoints because again, this is the control plane. I'm going through that. So now let's apply it. Applied configuration without a reboot. So we could look at all the pods. And we see the typical pods that would be on a control plane node, but let's deploy a pod that uh, would normally go on a worker that's not part of cube system. After applying the config, we can see that our Nginx deployment is up and running. And if we actually look at where it's running, um, obviously it's only running on the one machine I have in the cluster. So this would have failed before, uh, but we have to untaint the node and now we can run workloads. So even with the detour of not setting a static IP address, we still went through and did multiple installs of Talos and set up our Kubernetes cluster. It's all ready to go. And now if we want to add more workers to it, uh, we can show you how to do that in another video. But for now you can get started, bootstrap that old desktop, laptop, whatever, sitting in a closet and start learning some Kubernetes.